John Dupay is one of the most pathetic and creepy predators to ever encounter Chris Hansen. Even back in the day when I saw this, I knew that this guy was going to be gold. And he is comedy gold for a few good reasons. The first among them being that the chat log that he had with the decoy is incredibly long and pathetic. And you'd almost forget that the guy is 41 fucking years old from reading the way that he texts with all the emojis and all the bullshit that he sends to the decoy. And the decoy trolls the fuck out of him in that chat. It's an excellent read. And I think the second reason is just how scary this guy is. It's almost unreal. So without any further ado, let's get into it. And shout out to Walls for the upload, dude. You're like a fucking legend for uploading all this footage. 40-year-old John Dupay showed up at our sting house looking to meet a 13-year-old named Bailey. He had a lot of excuses, none of them good. Hello? Hello. Hey, boo. Who are you? I'm outside. My, I'm outside. My sister just got back in the car. So the sister thing, John Dupay doesn't have a car. He has. He doesn't have a job. He doesn't really have anything in terms of fucking prospects or even ways to acquire prospects. So he had to get his sister to drop him off. And even the way that he went about it, I went through the chat log before doing this video. He assumed that his sister was going to take him it's so smug the way that he tells the decoy like oh because the decoy asks, like are you sure you're are you sure you're going to be able to get a ride to come to the house john dupay is like yeah of course i'm going to be able to get a ride like my sister's going to do whatever i want he the level of entitlement that he displays even in getting a fucking ride to this is it's sickening Oh, okay. Just go through the back door so nobody sees you. Go to the back door. All right, I'm at the back door. <laughs> yeah, he loves that. He was also talking about having a knife to his throat. It's kind of funny that he uses that kind of vivid imagery. He was like, hey, when I go there, ain't no one going to be there with a knife hole, uh, up to my throat, is there? Go in. Okay. Okay. Bye. And these guys love coming in through the back door. Um, you know, the predator look back. It's like before they walk into the house, they'll throw their head back over their shoulder just to do a quick look to make sure that no one is seeing them. No one is witnessing them enter into the house. Uh, so he would love the idea of just coming in through the back door, especially at night. Uh. With his bag of shit. Hey. Get the fuck off your phone. What'd you bring? Hmm? What did you bring? Yeah, fucking right. Wow. John Dupay has nothing going on in his life. Um, for him to come in and just be clutching his phone, like acting like he's texting something really important, that is a complete display of him trying to project that he is important or him trying to project that there are people that he needs to talk to and that need to talk to him. In reality, he's probably just typing fucking things he's probably like in his settings just like like flicker like flicking around through the the pages of his settings he cannot be doing anything as serious as he's trying to uh trying to act hey what'd you bring hmm? what did you bring <laughs> presents that's also rude too so he's not even he hasn't even looked at her once so i mean she is not doing anything she's just literally awaiting his presence and it's kind of interesting that, you know, she, she's just hovering right here, giving all of her attention to him. And it's like he hasn't even looked up to acknowledge that it's her. And he's smiling at his phone. Show me. Show me. Oh, that was good. She did, she did the immediate. What did you This bring? is just like Jeff Sokol. Presents. So she, she's standing here, and then the predator comes here. As soon as the predator comes to be on this side of her, she'll move to be on this side she, she she'll move to the opposite side of the table she doesn't want to be adjacent to him that's uh that's too sketchy what do you got look and Show then me. she does it she moves Show oh and then he hovers more that was more distance that was excellent look at this look at the amount of distance Shit. oh god <laughs> no way hmm? What did you bring? It's almost like a magnetic or a repulsion. 
Presence. It's like every inch got? that he corresponds, like every uh, inch Show that me. he moves in, there's a corresponding move away on her part. Shit. <laughs> She's moving. Nice. <laughs> I hate the way that he flicks his wrist. What kind is it? <laughs> look at his face. Thank you. A fucking bow. Yeah, that's like the, the metaphorical uh, fedora tipping. He was ridiculous. In his chat, he does act like a fucking teenager. I mean, he's professing his love. He's talking about being soulmates. And I guess it would make sense. The decoy um, articulates that they're 13. So it's typical texting that you'd expect from a 13 year old on the the decoys part but the kind of fucking bullshit that john dupay says i mean it parallels the kind of pathetic shit that lauren was saying with kayla it's fucking ridiculous that he's going to have that kind of chat log and act like they're soulmates and then come in on his cell phone and then not even not even acknowledge the decoy that he's like said is his fucking soulmate what kind is it but he did that because it was bullshit. I mean, all of it was bullshit. He said that his last name was um, Santoro and his last name is Dupe. So everything that he told the decoy and there was a lot that he told the decoy. Everything that he told the decoy was just a fucking ruse. And this, I hate this face so Thank fucking you. much. Yeah, with his cross neck. It's nice to course. finally see you. This, this is crazy. He looks scary. Are you nervous? He looks like a fucking dinosaur. He looks terrifying. So Thank bully. you. And I'm almost positive he was a meth user. He he was busted for I think prescription narcotics, some kind of narcotics. But I'm almost positive that this dude was fucking like snorting meth a few a few moments before coming in. It's so nice to finally see you. What's this, up? this is crazy. Are you nervous? Yeah, <laughs> I'm really nervous. nervous. Why? Why? I don't, I've never done this. Have you? And his fucking no. hair is so horrible looking. It's so nice to finally. See I mean, it's just, it's incredibly thin. It's just, it's, it's almost like, this is what Brian Gosselin's uh, hair would look like if Brian Gosselin, like, keeps doing the thing that he was doing back at the, the Florida Stig. Like, the kind of just straight comb where you get it wet as fuck and then put a comb and directly push it outward. That's what John Dupay has done, just Thank in all you. directions. It's like, it's, it's probably wet as fuck with gel. It's, it's nice disgusting. to finally see you. This is crazy. What's up? Are you nervous? Yeah, He's I'm not really even nervous. looking at the decoy. Very interesting. He's hardly looked at the decoy. What kind is it? He can't even Thank acknowledge you. her. That's a look. And now he's looking it's away. Nice to finally see you. Looking this around. This is crazy. Yeah, what's up? Looking around. Are you scoping the place yeah, out. Yeah, I'm really nervous. Why? And he's still not I've never done this. Have you? No. So what do you want to do? John Dupe was not a confident person, and there was no reason for him to be a confident person. So, I mean, that just adds to the layer of absurdity that he would think this would actually happen. A hug? A hug? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> she dibs. So this was the first predator who was captured. Uh, she stuck around for a long time with Sokol. I just did the Sokol interview. And for that one, she was talking to Sokol for like a few fucking minutes. She just, she, she declined the hug from Sokol. She didn't leave like she did here. She declined and then she continued to talk. But here she was like, she, she was way too nervous and she was unprepared for that kind of shit. She might have been more prepared for it going into Sokol. Like, this is what I'm going to do if he swoops in on me. But at this time she was like, dude, I need to dip. Hey, Boo. Hey, Boo. Okay, see if I can run that store out of there in front of the prison. And look at that. No, right there. Please have a seat. Okay. Right there. Set the phone down, please. <laughs> so this guy pulls his phone out again. Hey. Did uh, he have his phone oh, off the no. entire time? He did. He had his phone in his so hand. What do you want to do? A hug? A hug. Uh, I don't know. Oh, I didn't even go over. So let's, let's look at the food that a he hug? got. Uh, I don't know. Let's look at the food. Okay, so he got a Snapple, Cheetos, and then... What I'm almost positive is a Cadbury um, chocolate bar with uh, caramel in it. It matches the save label. Hey, Boo. Hey. Can you see if I can run that store out of there in front of the And he pulls his phone out like he's going to be right on his phone. Okay. Right there. There's nothing on your phone, Set the phone dude. down, please. Put that shit down. Exactly. And that look, he knows he's what? fucked. He had already been involved with law enforcement, so he had already had this, um, this petty drug bust. So he really should have known better that just makes it even more surprising that he has the kind of frank dialogue that he has with chris but 
no, he's had experience with law enforcement, so he he should know exactly what's coming. <laughs> and his fucking hair just sticking up like this is ridiculous. If he had two of them, he'd be like a little devil, like with two hordes. What is your plan here tonight? Just hang out, watch football. Hang out, watch That's football. That's some shitty posture you? too, dude. What is your plan here? Look at this, jeez, just... man. This is like a fucking a, a nice little obtuse angle going on. Very fucking protruding back he literally looks like a hunchback right here and then his head yeah you need to work on your posture man hang out watch football hang out watch football with whom with her who's her with her with bailey, bailey. bailey. and how did you meet bailey exactly? through winter uh whisper whisper mm -hmm. And then, so Bailey, the decoy, he wasn't even looking at the decoy, but in the chat log, the decoy identified that she was a quarter Mexican, a quarter Salvadorian, a quarter English, and a quarter Irish. The decoy that we've seen does not appear to be any of these things. She does not look, I mean, this just looks like a, like a white girl. So it's kind of interesting that he would see the, I mean, I guess he wasn't even looking at the decoy, so it's unsurprising, but it's very interesting that he... He didn't even comment on the fact that the decoy was way more pale than she should have been, or at least than she probably would have been. There are light-skinned uh, Hispanic people, but I mean, if you had to just guess and be like, hey, aren't you like half Hispanic? Whisper. Hmm? It sounds like and she's going to say like bitch shoot or something. Know how old Bailey is? She's 14. She's 13. She's 14. Mm -hmm. That she was a lie. She's 13. Exactly. Not that that matters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how old are you? 30. He's 30. not 30. And why would you at 30 think it would be okay? He's 41 years old. He's not okay there. to hang out with a 13 year old girl home alone. <laughs> and I that mean, fucking hair. We just hit it off, friends. He looks like a straight up skeleton. His pointy ass nose. He has these deep, sunken eyes. Jeez, and this this big ear. These big ears. He does have like a protruding jaw, but it's almost like it's just so gangly and pointed that it's not even like a conventional masculine. Like he's too sucked up to have this like masculine protruding jaw. You hit it off with a 13 year old girl. Just we were just talking. <laughs> Chris is heated. Just talking. Chris yeah. is fucking annoyed. Chris is like. In the same way that he is he is kind of in this submissive position where he's making himself small in front of Chris. Chris is like looming over him, like putting this hand right here and making wild gestures with his right hand. Now you're here. This is more than talk. <laughs> yeah, it is more I than know, talk. I know we just came to hang out. No, I brought what get a hug? And watch football. Watch football. Yep. Who's playing tonight? Steelers and the Ravens. <laughs> Steelers and the Ravens. I had no intention. Watch he football. loves, yep. I mean, and he's constantly in the chat log making references like to fucking football and sports. The decoy must have actually watched a lot of sports because she's able to conversate about it. Like, it Who's liked, playing tonight? Steelers and Ravens. I think the decoy also liked talking about sports because like when the decoy was talking about sports, she wasn't talking about like sickening sex shit with John Dupe like, like he was trying to do often. I had no intentions with nothing. No intentions with nothing? Nope. I had no intentions with nothing. Well, John, what do you do for a living? That's the most articulate defense I've ever heard in my life. I had no intentions with nothing. Um, I was working at UPS. UPS? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and was. did you walk here today? Or? No, my sister dropped me off. <laughs> you don't have a driver's license? Yeah, I do. No car? No. <laughs> no car. So what do you do at UPS? Yeah, that's such a, that's uh, that's, that's yeah, classes, uh, that's Chris like shaving this dude. No car. No, no car. Damn. So what do you do at UPS? I mean, that's Chris like looking at him because Chris is an older male. And that's the expectation in our culture. Like if you're an old, especially a man, like a middle-aged man, I think the expectation culturally in America, at least, is that you own a vehicle. Now, of course, not every middle-aged man or older man needs to own a car. But that's just like the, the social expectation that we would almost require in order for someone to be considered like a... Uh, 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 law-abiding contributing member of society and the construction of that idea that person is usually a car owner in america yes i was a package handler package handler you're not there anymore no what do you do now um nothing besides what go online and try to talk to young girls i don't try to talk to <laughs> i mean i just try to find a girl to talk to and hang out with her. and he's also <laughs> calling about so what do you do at ups i was a package handler package handler you're not there anymore no what do you do now um, nothing. Besides what do you do now? Nothing. Try to talk to you. That's very interesting that he responds saying nothing too, because like, I guess we all know what it means when someone asks, what do you do? Someone is asking, what do you do for employment? But John Dupay could have responded like, well, I, I wake up and I eat. Like he could have responded with just the list of activities that he does like on the daily. I mean, he's not employed, but he could just said like, well, I fucking stretch my legs. I like watch a lot of TV.
So it's funny that he responded by just saying nothing. Like, dude, you're doing stuff, but um, it's interesting just to note that what do you do has a specific meaning, even though it could be interpreted in multiple ways. Girls. I don't try to talk to... I mean, I just try to find a girl to talk to and hang out, whatever. And how many times have you done this with somebody who's 13, 14 years old? Never. Never, Never talked to another girl who said she was 13? No. Nope. Well, who's Britney? In the chat log, John Dupay said that he'd only been with um, three women before. So whether that's actual uh, fact or not, I guess we'll never fucking know. But that's what he identified to the decoy. And it, from reading the chat, I'm surprised that he's even been with those three people. Who's Britney? Who's Britney? That was the other girl you were What the fuck? Well, who's Britney? <laughs> who's Britney? Who's Britney? That was the other girl you were talking to. <laughs> Look at this thing. What then that look, what this? Within the last few weeks, the girl who said, How many times have you done this with somebody? So, this is almost as good as the fucking Michael Willis. What? No way. Who's 13, 14 years old? Never. Never talked to another nope. girl who said she was 13? No. Nope. Well, who's Brittany? <laughs> who's Brittany? Who's Brittany? <laughs> that was the other girl you were talking to. Such confusion. Silence. What was this? <laughs> what was this? Within the last few weeks? Chris is all, dude, I know you did it. So you say to Bailey. He just changes the subject. He's like, dude, why are you fucking. And John Dupay didn't even protest. He didn't deny it. Very interesting that John Dupay we didn't deny to. it. Brittany. Who's Brittany? Who's Brittany? That was the other girl you were talking to. What was this? Typical. So Chris asks him a question. John Dupay responds with two questions. Who's Britney? And then when was this? I mean, neither of them. John Dupay obviously must remember seeing as it was within the span of a few weeks. And I'm sure that because his life is so bullshit, because it's absent of any real fucking activity, he's going to remember this. It's not like he has anything else going on in his life. Like he's so pathetic that this would be like the highlight of his day in order to like anytime he got a text from any female, that would be like the highlight. He would never Never forget it within the last few weeks there's no way that he'd forget the exchange so you say to bailey on whisper he's you're nervous. 30, how old are you she says 13. you say and then of course he has the closed posture um you know putting your hands clutching your abdomen protecting your vital organs that's just conveying how fucking how much unease he's experiencing because he knows the gravity of the situation You're he, not 13. he knows the contents of the chat he's reflecting on oh my god this dude is holding and it's a fucking lot of bullshit a lot of pages he's thinking this guy's holding the very damning piece of evidence that's going to get me convicted in that pit Yes, I'll be 14 next month. That's pretty clear. You remember that, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think so. And later you tell her I would yeah, love to Yeah, look at that you. swallow. And later you tell her I would love <laughs> to so be the thin. first guy to make you blank if you wanted me to, and I wanted to. Feel me inside you, baby. <laughs> That's good. Powerful eye contact on Chris's part. You tell her I would love to be the first guy to make you blank if you wanted me to, and I wanted to. Feel me inside you, baby. Feel me inside you, baby. And he looks Has that line ever worked for you before? No. Then why do you do that now? There is no... I mean, what kind of question is that? So it's like, I mean, Chris is basically just calling it pathetic, like... He's not even asking about, have you ever done this before with another minor? Like, Chris is literally just saying, like, has that line ever worked? So Chris is literally just calling him pathetic and creepy. He's not even chastising him, particularly for talking to a minor. In that specific exchange, he's just saying, has that line ever worked? Like, what are you fucking thinking, dude? Well, what am I to make he's, of it? Chris is just saying, like, dude, what kind of fucking human female is going to read this and, like, get turned on by it, you fucking idiot? I, there was no intentions made by it. That shows clear intent. Hell yeah, it shows clear intent. I want you to feel me inside you. What did you mean by that? Exactly? <laughs> He's staring at him. I want you to feel, feel me it? inside you. What He's not did even you mean blinking. By that exactly? <laughs> He's all, I, I was going to take your temperature. <laughs> and then you talk about that you and a bunch of people snuck into a mansion and partied for days. Where was that mansion? <laughs> Where was that mansion? Um, that was a while ago. Oh, Chris fucking hones in on him. Into a mansion 
and partying for days. Where was that? <laughs> Where was that van? Um, that was a while ago. How long ago? Maybe eight, nine years ago. Oh, so it was a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what the statute of limitations is for something. I guess what is it like burglary or like uh, breaking and entering? I don't know what the statute of limitations is, but uh, it, he's not going to be honest about that anyways. He's probably going to. I'm surprised that he admitted it. He should have. Or the smart thing to do would be to say, I lied. So I don't even understand why he's owning up to this crime. He's admitting to a crime. It doesn't make sense that anyone would admit to a crime. Well, I guess I shouldn't be surprised that these fucking idiots freely admit to the crimes they've committed. Uh, it never fucking fails to surprise me anymore. This does not look very good for you, John. The chat, the appearance, the Cheetos, the dark chocolate. Did you bring condoms with no. you? No. No. Nope. But you see how this looks. Absolutely. I mean... You're 30 years old. The girl you were talking to told you very clearly she was 13. And I mean, I had no intention to And he's just starting decide, to sweat John. profusely. Jeez. The girl you were talking to told you very clearly she was 13. And Chris isn't sweating. And look at this. I mean, his fucking forehead is just glistening. You could see the beads of sweat starting to form on his brow. And he hasn't even wiped them off. So, I mean, this, this, now, once Chris starts reading back specific lines in the chat, his fucking forehead starts being covered in sweat. And I mean, I had no intentions just besides... I had John, no intentions with nothing. Why don't you just tell me what you were really up to? Just to hang out, get to know her, you know? Get and, to know her. Yeah. And if you were the parent of a 13-year-old girl, would you be comfortable with that? <laughs> Look at that, he knows. I mean, it depends how, like, I mean, if I'm a good person, you know, like, a good person? typically good people don't meet strangers online, talk about sex, and then go over to visit, and within three minutes, ask for a hug. I always thought that line was interesting, because what Chris says is typically good people, I mean, he, and once again, I mean, I think Chris is talking about people who are minors, but that's not what he says. What he says is good people don't meet online and talk about sex and go in for a person? hug. Like amongst consenting adults, going online, talking about sex, meeting and hooking up, like that's that's perfectly fine. Fucking consenting adults, whatever, in whatever way, like as long as they all are fucking agreeing to participate, then knock yourself out. You know, like... But, I mean, I think Chris is talking about specifically doing this with an underage person, even though he's not saying. Typically, good people don't right meet here. strangers online, talk about sex, and then go over to visit, and within three minutes, ask for a hug. I mean, so asking for the hug, like, I, it's kind of weird in the context that he did it, but amongst consenting adults, I, it wouldn't be that weird. And nor would it even be bad to do all these things if everyone is of age. I mean, all they did was just ask for, you know, a hello hug. Down <laughs> With a 13 year old girl. And they, so back to the good person bit, how could you be a good person as John Dupay is trying to articulate and then show up and try and do this kind of bullshit? Um, what a fucking nonsense glance. Walked right in the house. Yeah, you did walk in. Well, she told me to come in. Does that make it right? Knowing that she's 13. Oh, I would never, I wouldn't have never just walked in. Yes, you, you would have. He would have. You know? This is exactly, that's exactly what he did at the mansion that he, that he went in. Why Please would you, why would you say that? And then in the same exchange, say that you wouldn't do that. See, that's, that's what fucking, I guess I shouldn't be surprised, but fuck. Does that make it right? Knowing that she's 13. Oh, I would never, I wouldn't have never just walked in, you know, without talking to her, you know, without getting her okay. Without getting now, that is literally what they said. They said they broke into the mansion and they partied for days. So he does it eight years ago, and now he's saying he never would when he had already fucking done that and admitted to, to doing that. You talked about spending the night here tonight. Well, you had no response. Yes or no? It depended, you know, like if she had to wake up in the morning, you know, like if I was going to stay wow, there. She touches his forehead. That was pure it depended, nervousness. You know, like, if she had to wake up in the morning, you know, that like, touch right if there. I was gonna stay here. There was no reason for him to do that. He was not wiping away sweat. He did not appear to scratch his face. That was a pure it nervous gesture. Well, so his hands yes are crossed. No. His hands are, are, are occupied. They're like resting on his abdomen. You know, and like, as soon as he frees she them, to morning, he touches like, his, his fucking head. Did she have to go to school? She said and she didn't have to go to school today. Right I mean, back tomorrow. to the defensive So you could just spend the night and hang out with a 13 year old girl? That's cool. Well, I mean, I didn't plan on it. You talked about it? I mean, I was going to leave after the football game. 
No, he wasn't. Unless you spent the night. No, I didn't plan on spending the night. He did. Well, you talked about having cannolis, a little dinner. <laughs> a little dinner? Yeah. Sounds like you were going to have a special little night with your 13-year-old date. No, just come over and have some cannolis, you know. Oh, it's snacks, going, it's vibrating. Who's uh, ringing you up? Uh, my cousin. Your cousin. Yeah. And what does your cousin want? Why is he saying these things? That's fucking, it, it just, I don't understand why, I mean, I guess, I, I'm just speechless. There's no Does your answer. cousin know that you're coming to visit a 13-year-old girl tonight? No. <laughs> no. Your sister? No. She knows that I was just coming to hang out with a girl. So what would your sister think if she knew... And that's very interesting because if John Dupay would have said yes, if John Dupay would have said yes, my sister does know. I wonder if police, just based off John Dupay, would have tried to prosecute her as well for facilitating. That's very interesting to consider. Um, what would need, what what burden of proof would be required in order to press charges against his sister? That's just an interesting thought. I don't think that she did know, but it's interesting to- He was dropping you off at the home where a 13-year-old girl was alone. Think she'd be cool with that? Um, I mean, she probably would say, you know, just don't do it, you know, don't do anything stupid, you know? Don't do anything stupid. <laughs> don't right. do anything stupid. Seems like you've already done that. For real. By just coming, I mean, all I was doing was just coming here to watch the game. No, by you did something stupid by showing up, and then you did something even more stupid by sitting down and fucking spilling your guts. You tried to solicit a 13 year old girl online. Exactly, dude. Using graphic sexual language. Very graphic. What do you think should happen to you? So I'm not, I'm not like Once that. Once again, he goes right back to the fucking forehead. That's the sweet spot for him. So I'm not, I'm not like that in a bag. Yet all the beads of sweat are actually right here. They're in, they're in the center of his forehead. Yeah, he's only touching his temple. How does this look? How does that look? Damn. John, you I, do you I'm hear not how like heavy? that in a bag. How does this look? How does that look? John yeah, the chat. Th there was a lot of chat. I mean, for for message after message, it was just John Dupay making declarations of his love and pledging to always be with the decoy. It's fucking pathetic. You and there me. was a lot of it. It was it was repetitive. Yeah, how does it look? If you were me, what would you think? Very good question. That I honestly made a mistake. That you made a mistake. Well, that's and that's true. a bad answer. And how would you define that mistake? Not to talk to girls like online. <laughs> what kind of answer is that? mistake that you made a mistake well that's true and how would you define that mistake not to talk to girls like online <laughs> no chris asks, how would you define the mistake and then john dupay what he's he's articulating the takeaway which is don't talk to girls online and how would you define that mistake what chris wanted him to do was to specifically say how he violated the law just because that would make the the conviction even easier to get not to talk to girls like online <laughs> no so there's nothing wrong with talking to girls online as long as they're fucking of age so he he's he's not even getting the point at all he didn't respond to the question and then furthermore the takeaway that he has it doesn't even correspond to what he's specifically doing what he's doing is trying to solicit a minor or try to come over and have sex with him i wasn't trying to come yeah, exactly over and have sex with yes him. he was Let me read it again. undoubtedly he was I would love to be the first guy to make you blank if you wanted me to, and I want you to feel me inside you, baby. And he said, come. That was come. I mean, what'd you mean by that? <laughs> what'd you mean by it that? Sounds like sex to me. <laughs> I was just playing with her, seeing... <laughs> playing with her. <laughs> he fucked Not up. Not playing with her butt. You know, just seeing, <laughs> like, where she was. Playing with her butt? Playing with her. Oh, so you <laughs> weren't going to play with her butt? <laughs> I was just playing with her, seeing... Just playing with her. I'm not playing with her butt. <laughs> not playing you know, with her butt. Like, That'd be funny if Chris was like, oh, so you were going to play with her front? <laughs> where she was, you know, like, she was 13. I mean, I'd never had sex with her. I mean, I didn't plan on coming here. Yeah, to no have shit, you her. didn't. Obviously not. It seemed like where she was, you know, like, she was 13. His response to have seeing where she was and then and then giving this vague cryptic kind of look while putting his arms up in the air and that is just him articulating like was, dude like he's like dude I, I don't know what to tell you he's literally just raising his arms up to say like there's nothing in my hands metaphorically he's conveying like there's no I have nothing in my defense like there's nothing in my repertoire that I could use to defend myself right now he's just throwing his arms up like dude I'm fucked she was 13. 
I mean, I've never had sex with her. I mean, I didn't plan on coming no here shit. to have sex well, with her. Tonight, because I walked in. And I didn't plan on it. He did. You didn't plan on it. Come on, you talked about it. But yeah, that wasn't my intentions. I talked to her all day today about just coming over, watching the game, and just hanging out. Salads. Salads. About what? You talked about salads. About like food and stuff? Yes. Yeah, while we're watching the game. This is a whole different kind of food here that you're talking about. So I went through the chat, as I said, I could not find the specific line referencing um, salads in the context. He's talking about eating ass, like tossing salad or something. I didn't see anything in the chat. And I listened after I there's one video on YouTube. I guess I'll, I'll post the link in the description that is like a uh, it's almost like a collage, like a slideshow of just all the text in between D, uh, Dupe and the decoy. And I went through all of it. I mean, I might have missed it. Perhaps it's in there just because like it's a fucking hour long, but I didn't see it. And I also, after not seeing it there, listened to all the fucking phone calls and didn't see it there either. In one of the phone calls, the decoy is talking about like an actual salad, but she's not talking about like tossing salad, at least not in the context that, that she said it couldn't be interpreted to be. So what do you think should happen to you, John? You're in a bit of a fix here. You're in a bit of a fix here. I'm terribly sorry, sir. Interesting shift of, of position. I'm terribly sorry. Look at his fingers. You're in a bit of a fix here. Yeah, look at his fingers I'm moving a mile sorry, a minute, sir. moving a mile a minute. I said earlier that he might that he was on meth. That I think he's on meth. Um, I think after it's been a while since I watched this, that would explain the kind of like fucking throbbing veins in his neck and like the profuse sweating. But then again, he could just be really fucking nervous. I mean, this is probably one of the most high stress situations that a human being can experience. So maybe his response, his his visible nervous response might be attributed to him being nervous as fuck or maybe it could be meth. But I think the the kind of jittery movements that he's making would also support the hypothesis that he might be on fucking meth. The game. This and he's is licking his legs. Kind of that was a little JPW. Yeah, these fingers. So what do you think should happen to you, John? So yeah, if anyone can um, post a link or can, can give some kind of hard evidence about the solid line, dude, I will pin that shit so fucking fast. You're in a bit of a fix here. I'm terribly sorry, sir. You're terribly sorry. And then, of course, by saying he's sorry, he's admitting that he has something to be sorry for. So that's just a straight up concession. Like, yep, you're right. He, he's, he's now abandoned his, oh, I was just going to watch a football game with, with, with Bailey. And now he's saying I'm sorry. Because if he really was just going to watch a football game, there's nothing that he'd need to be sorry for. So in saying I'm sorry, he's admitting to him having things that he needs to be sorry for. Well, there's something you need to do. And that is I'm Chris Hansen. I love how Chris doesn't even look these guys in the eyes when he says that. It's so dismissive, but it's so awesome. I'm terribly sorry, sir. And that's what Chris wanted. Well, as soon as as soon as he says that, he's like, "Fuck you, dude." There's something you need to do, and that is so I'm right. Chris Hansen. And this is an investigation called Hansen versus look at Predator. It. Now we got the the other side of his face, and here we go. Sir, yeah. If you want to leave, you should go out that door right there. They're fucking pushing him. No. They're so stern. So John Dupe was the first guy to get caught up in this thing. So this was kind of all the the crew kind this. of coming into. They had probably rehearsed this a few times, but this was this would have been the first time in HVP that the crew kind of came out all is an all as one Hansen versus Predator as a team. Boom, flanked, sir. Flanked. Well, Look at someone right comes here. Oh no, just up there. No. Nope. Oh dude, wrong door. And the cops there. <laughs> Damn, he must have bumped into a fucking police officer. He must have bumped into a cop. Look at it. <laughs> and then the cop comes out. Jeez, who's that guy? That guy has worse posture than fucking Alan Charnay. What's up with this cop right here? Fuck, dude. Come on. Look at this cop's posture, dude. You gotta work on your posture too, man. 
I mean, no disrespect towards the cop. The dude's old and he's still, you know, busting people, but fuck. Can I see this car? Yeah. Nope. Throw his ass in the back. Yep. Oh, look, we have a little bit of the interrogation. And that fucking shirt. This fucking abomination of a shirt, which is like four sizes too fucking big. He's like literally swimming in this. This could double as a fucking dress if he didn't have any pants. Um, and aside from it being fucking huge on him, it's uh, there's a bunch of... I don't know why he, he chose this shirt. In the chat, he says that he was wearing... He's specific about it. He says he was wearing a Tommy Hilfiger button-up and that he changed to come meet the decoy. So it's kind of interesting that he changed to put on this fucking abomination of a shirt. Thank you. <clears throat> and now he's, now he's upset. So now he's crying. why do you think you're here? Because I went to that house. Yeah. And how did you learn about that house? No, that's not... That's only house. part of it. Exactly. By talking to that girl. Let's remember what the girl's name is. Bailey. Mm -hmm. And how are you talking to Bailey? Are you talking on the phone? Very interesting. So it's a small room. There's one little desk and John Dupay is in the corner. And then you have these two detectives, um, the female interrogating him and then the male. So let's see if they're blocking the door. And they are, yep. exactly. So, why so, what I was talking about, oftentimes in America, the read technique, which is the interrogation a technique that most of these detectives use in some manner or in some way, but one of the things they do is they'll put the suspect far away from the door, as far away as they can, in order to just create distance in between the suspect and the door. They do that to psychologically distance the idea of freedom or leaving. I mean, of course, John Dupay is under arrest, so it's not like he could leave even if he wanted. But nonetheless, that is an intentional. They want him to be literally and, and literally and figuratively with his back against the wall. Why do you think you're here? Because I went to that house. Like he is right there. And how did you learn about that house? By talking to that girl. What's, do you remember what the girl's name is? Bailey. <laughs> Bailey. Him and his sniffles. And how are you talking to Bailey? Are you talking on the phone? Or... Both. Like actual voice-to-voice -voice conversations? Mm-hmm. Okay. Hello? Hi. Hey, boo. <laughs> we get a little bit of the call. Hi, baby. What's your boy? What are you doing? Nothing. What are you doing? I'm just waiting. And this is the kind of fucking drivel that I had to sift through in order to try and find evidence for that uh, ass eating line, which I was still unable to fucking produce. Who are you? <laughs> oh, are you? Uh huh. Uh huh. Yep. I love. I love. I love you. How pathetic. How did you first meet her? On the internet. <laughs> what what part of the internet? An application? Um, mm -hmm. what yeah, that's a app? big whisper. She said, what was it? Was it Xbox Live? <laughs> yeah, what, <clears throat> about you wanting to feel, you want her to feel you inside her. I mean, yeah. I know what that means to me. <laughs> I know. I should. John Dupay was not as much, he never went about this um, in like a hit it and quit it. That was not, he, or at least he attempted to convey that he was not the type to just show up and then have sex and leave. John Dupay was talking about them being soulmates, being in love. So he was much more elaborate. He took a more poetic approach to the kind of um, sexting that he would try and engage the decoy in. So that uh, feel me inside you, baby, all, most if not all of the sexual bullshit that he said to the decoy was, tr it was him attempting to dress it up as romance. Never said Even though it's still it. incriminating evidence against him that he was going to have sex. And you're talking about wanting to make her calm. Calm, damn, she says that. Kristen said it, she'll say it. Like that. And you're talking about wanting to make her calm. Damn, she looks him in the eyes when, when she says that too. That's also, um, that, that would probably make him feel a little awkward just to hear. A female said that, uh, say that. That was just all. What did you think that, um, like, what is she supposed to? But it's intentional that the big, uh, bald, 
presumably masculine detective is sitting down saying nothing and then the um she's not bad looking um she's old she's older but she's not she's not particularly bad bad looking so having her interview john dupay is also a strategic move read from that like well when i mean honestly when i was talking to her i mean i, I was hoping that there was a chance that you know that she it was just i don't even know why i said that to her yeah yeah it's because you were horny all right let's stand up Damn, this dude is fucking posted. He's also, so what he's doing, he is sitting, taking up space. Um, That's a very, that's a masculine power play kind of move, just to take up a lot of space. Like, you're leaning back in a chair, your legs are spread out. And then conversely, um, what's typically referred to as like the feminine would be being small and sitting with as as the female is sitting with your legs close together and then your arms kind of close together minus this arm and then yeah contrast this dude is like yeah this is my fucking room like i'm, I'm gonna spread out all right let's stand up and he's chewing gum I'm gonna stand up and turn around and behind your back damn <laughs> damn Again. Dupay was released from prison last yeah. summer after serving three years. Go. Thank you. <laughs> and that was John Dupay. So once again, shout out for the footage, um, walls, dude. It's so awesome that you can do these. I think now that this footage is available, the next few videos I do are probably going to be HVP predators. Um, I think that it's about time that we finally started really uh, that the analysis community started. Uh, focusing our efforts towards HVP. So until next time, everyone.